Okay, so here we are at my bar, and uh, as we talked about, today we're going to be discussing barrel aging. So we got this cute little two liter barrel here, and we got that from this very cool company called Oak Barrels Limited. And they send this cool little box with everything you need all wrapped up nice and neat. It looks like a really good quality barrel, Chuck. Yeah, I first saw this barrel at uh, Independent Stave in Lebanon, Kentucky. Uh, I was hoping it was actually made by Independent Stave. It's not, but, but they sell it. A really quality barrel that comes in different sizes. There's a one liter or a two liter. I think there's a five liter. Maybe there's other sizes. Uh, so my story with, uh, with personal barrel aging was there used to be a restaurant in our hometown that did a barrel aged Manhattan. They would, uh, I think it made it with Buffalo Trace, and uh, they would concoct a whole bunch of Manhattans. They, they put it in a barrel, they'd age it for some period of weeks. Uh, so I've just had, Manhattans were my mother's very favorite cocktail, so I just had to try one. Absolute catnip, unbelievable yeah. product. That, that was probably the best Manhattan I've ever had. It was just it was just incredible. So I saw this at Independence Day, but I had it in the back of my mind for a little while. So I went ahead and ordered one and uh, uh, came like a little kit, uh, comes with a spout right there. You take a rubber mallet, you hammer that in, and it uh, it has a bung hole at the top, and it has a, a cork, or as, since this is a whiskey barrel, we'll call that, that a bung, that you can use to tighten everything up. But before you make your Manhattan, or maybe you just want to uh, add some extra aging to, uh, to some kind of whiskey that you want to put a little bit more of an edge to, you need to prepare it. You need to make sure that this cask is, is, uh, is watertight. So how do we do that, Brent? Yeah, so we're gonna start with uh, rinsing it out. So I've got some water here and a little funnel. And Chuck, if you could kind of help me keep the funnel in place, sure. and I'll try to pour this without making a mess for all of us. Uh, I'm sure Julia Child would do this exact same thing. I'm going to pour some water in there, give it a good rinse, and then they said to expect the stoppers open, so let's close that. You can tell that I have a towel down there for a reason. So uh, we've closed off the, the little uh, uh, faucet there. We've got some water inside. Better to lose a little water than a little whiskey. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No kidding, brother. So we're going to put the bung in for just a second. And uh, Brian, why don't you just give that sucker a little, uh, little swish? And uh, these things are charred, uh, just like any bourbon barrel should be. So there's going to be some uh, some loose char. Some loose char that comes out, a little charcoal that uh, we're going to pour out. Now, did you get to pick your char level, or is this? I think there's only one, one char, char level, and it does tell you what it is. I think it's a number four, number if four. I remember so correctly. That's the alligator char, right? Now, uh, if you notice, you can put an engraving on uh, the end of the barrel, and, and we did that. It was a small extra charge, but um, ah, we thought for fun, if you're gonna do it, you might as well uh, do it right. Now, we're gonna pour this out, and you're not gonna be able to see what comes out of it, uh, but we will tell you that, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, gonna be kind of chunky. Yeah, a few little, few little things come out of there. I've done two of these barrels. I've only had just a little bit of char come out, so it's it's a nice precaution. Yeah, but even when we do single barrel, barrel picks from the store, anytime we thieve from the barrel, there's always some type of char that comes from it. Right. Uh, I'm sure they pressure wash those barrels as well, so yeah. you will always have some of that. So now uh, we're gonna fill this up, and I think they said re recommend 24 hours. Is I'll, that right? I usually do two or three days. Okay. Fill it with water. You want that, that wood to swell so that it's going to be really watertight. I've got to say, these are well done barrels. I've done two of them so far. I've never had a, a barrel leak, but I will always go ahead and, and get that, uh, that, that wood wet on the inside and get it swollen so it's going to be really nice and tight. Now Chuck, you've told us a story before about a restaurant that had this really cool uh, bourbon that you tried and, and you asked them about what, what it was. Can you yeah. tell that story again? Yeah, this, this is the cafe at uh, Bardstown Bourbon in Bardstown. Uh, I ordered a, I think an old fashioned or something like that. It was awfully tasty. So I asked them what kind of whiskey, well, we got a visitor on the bar. Oh, great. So I asked them what kind of whiskey they used and they told me that they actually keep a little barrel like this. And when they get to the, near the bottom of a, of a, of a bottle of a particular bourbon, 
they'll just pour those remnants in there and they just continually do that day after day week after week uh and so it's a real <laughs> we got the every cat distillery here. needs a <laughs> distillery cat no all right well thank you cleo for making your special appearance now please go away every distillery needs to have a distillery cat so they just mixed whatever they had left and and uh, yeah and it it was tasty so this is a two liter barrel, so you would want to put in two liters, a little bit more than, than two quarts, about a half gallon. And it, it is full. It is full, you got a little spillage right there, that's fine. Nothing wrong with having a little, little staining. Uh, believe me, my, my barrels uh, show that uh, whiskey has been involved and there's some age to it. Absolutely. So leave that in there at least 24 hours. If, you, if you're patient, two or three days, Make sure, you know, see if there's, uh, if there's any leakage. I usually put like some newspaper underneath because that'll be a telltale sign sure. that there was some leakage. I've never had a problem. Uh, the low tap looks good. There's a little bit of water around there, but not bad. Yep. Uh, so after that uh, one, two, three days, you'll pour it out and uh, you'll fill it up with some whiskey and whatever kind of cocktail or just whatever kind of concoction. So I think we need to try to make some Manhattans. What do you think? I can't wait for that. And just like Chuck alluded to earlier, uh, aging just bourbon to get, to get more age to it, that's what my intent with my barrel is. So I'm going to put some Buffalo Trace in there, which is eight years. I'm going to try to emulate Eagle Rare. So we'll see how that, how that works out, which is 10 years. Now, since the barrel is smaller, there's uh, more surface area, it won't take quite two years to try to get that Eagle Rare taste profile. So uh, I'll keep you guys posted on that. Do you think in three months maybe? Six I think months? Three, three to six months. Okay. Now these do come in different sizes. We selected the two liter because Chuck had such good experience with that. It's nice size. And now we're gonna to wanna to place this where the temperature changes, right? So we want it to get cold in the winter and we want it to get hot in the summer, just like uh, it won't last that long. But for <laughs> however many weeks or months that it's in there, we want some temperature variances to go in and out. Of it, sure, right? just like a real rick house. I keep mine on the, on the back porch. It's a glassed in back porch, so it'll get pretty warm in the summertime and it does get chilly in the winter. Perfect. So there you go. Yeah. Next step in the process is we're going to be ready to make some Manhattans. All right, sometime later, we're back in the bar. Chuck, Brian, thanks for coming back. Uh, this is going to be fun today. We're going to finish our barrel aged Manhattan, right? Yeah. yeah. So, Chuck, you have experience with this. Um, and based on that, we decided to, to do this for the show. Now, Manhattan, let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it's a classic cocktail. It's uh, um, uh, bourbon or rye whiskey uh, along with um, some vermouth, uh, traditionally sweet vermouth. Is the, is the classic Manhattan and some bitters. Uh, there's a variation on the the regular Manhattan that's called a perfect Manhattan, mm -hmm. in which you use uh, one half vermouth and one half uh, I'm sorry one half dry vermouth and one half sweet vermouth. So it's not quite as, as sweet. Um, a lot of people uh, swear by uh, going with a rye whiskey because you know rye really holds up well in, in a cocktail. Uh, I so far have been making, I, I think I've made one barrel of rye, but I've done two, two other barrels of bourbon and they've been completely satisfactory. Yeah, so today we're gonna go with Buffalo Trace. Uh, you know, Brian, it's just one of those bourbons that you can use as a mixer, you can drink it on rocks, you can have it uh, up. You know, uh, what's that gonna set me back? Uh, between 25 and $30, depending where you are, and right now, if you can even find Buffalo Trace right. or something. But it's a good all-around drink. Oh, yeah, definitely. Me. In a cocktail, meat, uh, on the rocks, any, any way you cut it, uh, Buffalo Trace is a great So drink. find something you like to drink. Yes, exactly. Right? And now, Chuck, tell us a little bit about this vermouth. This is not your everyday average vermouth, right? So th there are, vermouth is just such a varied thing. A vermouth is a fortified wine, uh, which means it has some spirits in it. Uh, and then it has some aromatics, kind of like gin. So anything you can imagine uh, it can be can be used, you know, herbs and spices can be used. So the universe, I'm not an authority on, on vermouth, but the, the, the universe is very broad and the vermouth can be just as different as, as the bitters. If, if, if bourbons can be a bit different from one another, then bitters can be even more different from one another and vermouth all over the place, including the fact that there's sweet, which is the traditional for Manhattan, and, and the dry vermouth. Folks who were into vermouth had uh, steered me toward Carpano Antica. Uh, it's an Italian vermouth, a vermouth uh, came out of Italy in like the 1700s, uh, and this is considered one of the premier uh, vermouths. Having not had much experience with a really premium vermouth, the first time that I met a Manhattan 
with it. I used to make a Manhattan before I poured it in, in the barrel. I just wanted to see if that's something, if I would like it right then and there, even before it's aged. I found the Crapano Antica to be, uh, you know, extremely, extremely taste filling. It's, it's, it can almost be overpowering. It's kind of like, wow. So the policy I've been using on my barrels is rather than the traditional two parts whiskey, one part vermouth, I've been doing three parts whiskey, one part vermouth. And uh, as I was saying before the show, that does not grind out the Crapano Antica at all. It still holds up. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a prize fire. Yeah, uh, I was really happy that I found this at Beverage Barn. Uh, uh, it, it's been, I've made a couple of Manhattans with it just to try it out. I haven't made a Manhattan out of it yet, so uh-huh. I'm curious to see what it's going to taste like. I've had different vermouths like Gallo or uh, Martina Rossi, right. but I've never had a premium vermouth in a cocktail, so I'm going to be. But you carry all different. of those. Oh, right? yeah, we do. And, and, and what's the difference between a sweet and, and not a dry vermouth? So for me, the sweet is very overpowering. It's, if you like a sweet wine, I would say go with the sweet vermouth. Uh, or if you like, if you're not a wine drinker, if you like sweet coffee, I would say go with the sweet vermouth. I'm more of a dry guy. I don't like anything really sweet, so I always use dry vermouth in mine. Okay, cool. Well, uh, just a little trivia uh, about the Manhattan. I got my little bar book out just to, to check the recipe, make sure we weren't doing anything stupid. And uh, great little anecdote in here, Chuck. Do you know how a Manhattan came to be? Well, I read your book, so yeah, <laughs> I, I think I do. Uh, so it was created in 1874, uh, and it was made uh, at the Manhattan Club in New York City. Uh, Lady Churchill, uh, Sir Winston Churchill's mother, was, was being feted by the governor of uh, New York, uh, Governor Tilden, and this cocktail uh, was made in her honor, and it's, it's just become one of the classics. You know, the, the Manhattan, the old fashioned, those are the two classic, well, other than maybe a highball, but sure. let's not be silly about it. In terms of, of, of a classic uh, cocktail, the Manhattan and, and the Old Fashioned, you know, that's, that's the, the Mickey Mantle and the Roger Maris of, uh, of bourbon cocktails. My mother, as it so happened, was uh, the Manhattan was her, her yep. favorite uh, cocktail. Uh, she had a favorite old restaurant in, in Lexington, Kentucky called Roger's Restaurant. Very old school, 1940s kind of a restaurant where the, uh, the, the, the waitress would come over with a uh, that that Paul Mall voice and say, "What are you having, honey?" <laughs> so uh, my parents were, uh, had retired to Florida. They came back to Lexington uh, for one last time because uh, that was the last week that Roger's Restaurant was going to be uh, in, in business. So we went out to dinner, my wife and I, with my folks, and Mom, of course, ordered a Manhattan, and I ordered a Manhattan, yeah. and her head kind of whipped around. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm doing this out of respect to Mom, and Mom always ordered uh, uh, lamb fries. So uh, when the waitress looked at me, she said, uh, I said, uh, I'll have the lamb fries and that head whipped around again. So <laughs> it, it was a great send off to Roger's restaurant and it kind of got me on the, uh, the Manhattan Trail, frankly. All right, perfect. So Manhattans, Lady Churchill, lamb fries. I mean, <laughs> it's got everything going for it. A lot of hair. So let's rock and roll. Like we said, this is a two liter oak uh, charred barrel uh, that we ordered online. We're gonna put a link in the description uh, so you can see that. We'll also put some links to some of the products we have here. Uh, so we're gonna put in uh, 1,200 milliliters of Buffalo Trace, 400 of uh, Antica, Torpano Antica, mm-hmm. uh, and then we're gonna add some some bitters. Now, you like Fee Brothers bitters. You, you've, uh, fan, yeah. you've told me about those before, so I've ordered some of those online. Nice. We'll put a link to that as well. We're probably gonna use mainly orange and Maybe we'll put a dash of cherry in there just for fun. Go for it, man. Uh, you know, so we'll see what happens. Um, but we'll cue the music and uh, enjoy this part of the video. I love the fact that he got all the measurements down to the milliliter. We're on the metric system. Chemistry mm-hmm. major. Nice. <laughs> Don't try this at home. This guy's a professional. No, on second thought, try it at home. 400 for the Manhattan, 250 for me. Man, that just smells good. I wish you had smell o vision The first barrel aged Manhattan I ever had was made from Buffalo Trace, so I'm very optimistic about this. It's good. Now, what bourbon do you typically typically use, Chuck? Uh, I used, the first time I did it, I used a Wilderness Trail Rye, which okay. is excellent nice. and a, a decent price. Uh, the second time, I had somebody uh, give me uh, two bottles of Basil Hayden. Basil Hayden is a bean product, and you know, a little it's, light. It's a little light, 
but you know what? It made a nice cocktail. Really? So okay. we, we have uh, finished most of that. Um, and did so. the most recent one I've done was made with uh, Wild Turkey 101, the three to one with the Capano Antica. And I'm all excited about that. Oh, yeah. Good thing we have uh, multiple bottles around here. Yeah. Brent has a well stocked bar. And a and a net it, but oh, it's starting to smell. It's mm. great. Pop. Mm -hmm. Remember the first time you ever had Buffalo Trace? Uh probably a sampling at Buffalo Trace. Yeah, yeah. Same right. here. We had a uh, we had a fundraiser here in town. And that had a, a a bourbon sampling feature to it. First time I ever had Buffalo Trace and Blantons, mm -hmm. and now I'm uh, you know hooked for life. And that was probably when you could find Blantons readily available oh, for, for next to nothing. Yeah. So Buffalo Trace is allocated. Yes, it is. Amazing. Yep, yeah, we get it. Our monthly allocation of Buffalo Trace just like we get Blantons. And there's some states that they say that they can't even get it. If you go to the Buffalo Trace Distillery, they usually have it. In fact, I've never not seen. I've always seen it there. Buffalo the Trace, and then they'll alternate between either Blantons or Eagle Rare, rare. Uh, so you can't go wrong either way. There's even, I think, a Facebook page out there that that's oh, what does Buffalo Trace have today? And some of the first people who get to the gift shop in the morning will post what the premium bourbon uh, that's out there. And then you can also find the bourbon cream, which is delicious. It is. And the Wheatley's vodka is yeah. uh, always available. If you go to Buffalo Trace, I think you can buy buff if you go to Buffalo Trace Distillery, I think you can buy bottles of Buffalo Trace anytime you want. Yeah, I don't think there's a limit on uh, there could be now, uh, by a minute while, but last time I was there there was no limit on uh, regular Buffalo Trace. You think you can buy multiple bottles? I think so, yeah. Uh, I Unless know, it's changed. Uh, now for the Blantons and the Eagle Rare they, they scan your ID and I think you can only buy two per month or I thought, I thought it was one every three months. Maybe, maybe that is, yeah. Uh, it's you know it's very uh, minimal. Uh, we don't live next door to Buffalo Trace, so uh, that's not really a problem for Which me. Which is a good thing, because Heaven Hill, they don't have that. And there's a lot of local Savar sound that go to Heaven Hill every day just to acquire bottles. And oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. All right, Chuck, so let's talk about bitters. Okay. Now, how much are we going to put in this sucker? <laughs> it's going to be really scientific. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. When, when it feels We're going right. to guess how yeah, many when, when it feels right. Yeah. So if I... Look, I, I go through a lot of bitters. Yeah. Bitters are an ingredient in, in my daily house cocktails and I buy an embarrassing uh, amount of, of, of bitters. Yeah. So I'm kind of heavy handed. I like bitters. I love Fee Brothers Orange Bitters. Uh, I would go easy on the cherry because that's, I mean, that's- I'm thinking thing. we're going to put two shakes of cherry. Sure, why not? That's, I mean, that's, that's almost nothing. nothing. You like to break the rules and let's just do it your way. Yeah. <laughs> I got my rule breaking shirt on today. That's right. My drinking shirt. So we're just going to put a couple of little shakes in there. Did it come out sometimes? It's, it's, yeah, it's it little, did. I did see it go so, in. I, for some reason, I find when I open up my, my Fee Brothers Bitters, the first few shakes, it's like, I don't think anything's coming out. And then after a little while, okay, we're, we're doing good here. So what do we think? 12, 15 sure. shakes? Oh, yeah. I, apologies to professional mixologists. I'm sure you have a really high standards, but. Yeah, uh, sorry. I put a, a little more than that. This is yeah, half a gallon. There you go. All right. Oh, I can smell it, man. That smells good. Nice. Okay. There it is, fellas. Now all we got to do is let it, let chemistry go to work. So where are you going to store your barrel? So I'm going to keep it up here in the bar. This is on the third floor. It gets really hot up here in the summer. Mm -hmm. I want that liquid to swell up and through the wood. Uh, so, you know, when should I start tasting? Like a month from now? I have nothing wrong with trying it. Uh, after a month, um, when do you when do you feel like your your uh, Manhattans have tasted like? Yeah, this is where I want. Uh, you know, it's it, once again, it's very scientific. It's kind of like I can't wait any longer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try to go at least two months. Yeah, uh, three months might be nice, uh, but it, you just get kind of impatient. Uh, so I haven't done any elaborate. You know, scientific testing of, of one month after two months after three months. It's, uh, you know, we're, we're having fun with it. There you go. All right. Uh, you might want to shake it up just a little bit and mix, okay. it, mix the ingredients. Not sure if I want to do that on camera, but I'll do it anyway. Turn it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
I did check just a second ago if anybody saw me. Check to make sure that the little tap was closed this time. I really recommend having some type of a tray like this. He has a tray and a towel. Uh, you know, you can get a little bit of leakage, and some of that leakage can, you know, when the water evaporates out of it, you know, you've got tar on your hands. So, you know, you don't want to mess up a nice table or a nice countertop. Now, personally for me, uh, especially during, during the summer, I will keep my barrels out on my back porch. Uh, it's partly glass, it's partly screen. It gets pretty warm back there. Uh, I made uh, some uh, Manhattans right before the Super Bowl this year, and it was pretty cold on the back porch, and I left my barrels inside for a, a while because it was, you know, room temperature is a little bit warmer. I didn't want all that liquid to, to withdraw from the uh, from the, the barrel. I wanted it to find its way in there. They're now on my back porch and with warmer weather coming in, uh, I'm really excited to see what summer will do. Yeah. Well, I've got my drinking shirt on. We've got this cooking. Let's try some. I think it's a good idea. Be right back. All right, so we're back. And Chuck, we've got your barrel out here. Yeah, in the interest of time, uh, we pulled out one of my old barrels. This was filled the week before the Super Bowl 2022, so I think that was like February the 3rd or thereabouts. Uh, this is late April, so uh, this has been in the barrel for two and a half months. It is three parts Wild Turkey 101, one part Carpano Antica, and a generous uh, dosage of uh, Fee Brothers Orange Bitters. Uh, it has been actually, because it's been cold this winter, it's been inside um, most of the, of the winter. It went back, back outside about a week ago. It was so cold on the back porch that I just didn't think I would get much action. It'd be better to try room temperature. Uh, a couple of uh, little reminders. Your, uh, your spigot, uh, if, if you see carefully, the, the little twisty thing on the spigot is turned this way, and, and the, 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 the standard with valves like this, whether it's a natural gas valve or a liquid or whatever, is that if, if the, 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 the turncock, and maybe that, that's the right word, if it's perpendicular to the, the, the flow of the, uh, the product, then it should be shut off. If you open it out like that, then the product ought to, ought to come out. So before you pour your precious bourbon and, uh, and vermouth or whatever you're gonna be making, make sure that this, this thing is at, at 90 degrees. Um, you can see that mine's starting to get a little bit of a little stain on there, which is perfectly fine with me. Uh, I can't even tell you exactly how that came out. I don't know if it's coming out through the cork, but it's coming out through the top. So this is a two and a half month old. Let's see here. Maybe we need to do this like okay. this. So, uh, another little tidbit. Uh, I surprised Brian, I surprised myself. Uh, I was reading in, um, I think it was Bourbon Plus Magazine uh, recently, they had a, a feature about vermouth, and this author said, contrary to anything I've ever seen before, that once vermouth is opened, it should be refrigerated, because after it's been opened, it will begin to degrade. Brian had never heard that, I had never heard about it before, before reading. I know there's a lot of vermouth that's been sitting at, at the back of bars and in, in cabinets for a long time. Um, I don't know, the next time I open some nice vermouth, I'm either gonna use it up in a hurry or I, I might refrigerate it. So uh, we're using uh, Brent's uh, shaker here. Normally, he has much fancier equipment than I have. Uh, my, my ice shaker is basically just a stainless steel glass and uh, it comes with a, a plastic insert. And the, the idea is we want to chill the Manhattan uh, and, and pour it into the glass without ice going uh, with the Manhattan into the glass. We, we don't want uh, we want to limit dilution as much as possible. So for me, I've got my glass, I shake it up for about 15 seconds, I pull a plastic insert out, and I use a classic uh, strainer like this. These are designed to fit over the, the, the standard shakers, and uh, you put that in uh, like, like such, and you lift up your, your uh, shaker, and it, the liquid pours out, but the ice stays where it belongs. Brent is much fancier. His opens up like that, so we'll put the ice in like that. But the strainer is built in, folks, so uh, we're gonna go for convenience over style here. Brent's got some nice, looking beautiful cubes. He has a refrigerator that makes these. New toy. Uh, two, two dollars. Okay. okay, I think two will be good. I like to fill my shaker up between half to two thirds full of ice. Um, it works really well when you do that. You have to pull the cork out a little bit, so we got a bit of a vacuum. There you go, got a good flow. 
a little bit of an uneven edge here, so I know this doesn't make for great video, but the idea is not to pour bourbon all over Brent's floor. You pour it all over Brent, just not Brent's floor. <laughs> So Chuck, have you tried this previously, uh, like a month ago, or is this gonna be your first time trying it? No, this will be the first time I've tried it with the wild turkey. Uh, I I'm, I'm, have, have really high hopes because wild turkey is a good, robust bourbon. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, I've done one rye before. I've done a bourbon twice, and I saw the look on uh, Brian's face when I said I, I made the, the second batch with Basil. Hey, a buddy gave me a couple of bottles. He was gonna be part of it. Yeah, so, do something yeah, with yeah. it. It's yeah. no harm, and, and, and we made Manhattan for for the, the four of us um, as we were getting ready to uh, to barrel it, and it was, it was a tasty, tasty cocktail. So, okay. So I think the Manhattan is typically or traditionally served in a martini glass, right? This is looking very interesting. That looks nice. The bitters really change the color of it. Or is it the tannins in the barrel? Yeah, another point. Thank you, sir. Well, there you go. This is our ode to the uh, barrel aged Manhattan that both of us tried at one of our favorite Henderson restaurants. It's no longer there. So we will say cheers to Winston Churchill's mother. Thank you, City of New York and Manhattan Bar. Cheers. That is a tasty cocktail, my friends. That is. Oh, that's delicious, Chuck. That, that, good job, buddy. That turkey did not die in the barrel, did it? It no. did not. Definitely get some bitters. It's I not like overpowering, it. though. No. No. That's a good drink. Smooth it drink. Is. I would do turkey again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, and remember, please, drink responsibly. <laughs> <laughs>